Tell everyone what the plan is, where we're going. We're headed to a Harvest Host, <laughs> of course, because that's what we're doing these days. And it's a beehive. Uh, it's, so we're gonna do honey. I think mm -hmm. um, we need to make some, like a recipe. Yep. We're gonna do the bee gardens in, if I'm pronouncing this correct, Fayetteville, and then we're gonna head up to Kitty Hawk. Hey, I can't, I can't. No, I won't be. You might be a tourist if. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I got it. See you later. Goodbye. What the heck happened? I have no idea. Charlie doesn't know either. while you're dumping? Hey, Caleb. Yeah, what's Would up, Would you Dad? mind um, figuring out how to pay the $2? Certainly. Certainly. Can you maybe go, maybe go inside? Yes, sir. I can go a little further forward. RV dump station. How do you pay? Well, light on, cap open. Obtain code from cashier. Oh, all right, I'll go pay. Uh, well, hold on, I gotta give you a card. Believe it or not, in all the travel we've done, this is our first truck stop dump stop. It's ten dollars. It's a no-go. Their city shut off the dumps. Really? Believe that? I know. I don't know why. Like, so we can't dump here? We cannot. Ah. I know. Now Chris is in there making lunch. So hey, I tell you what Caleb, I'm gonna pull for a little bit. We might as well get diesel. Hey there. Hi. You got like about eight feet back here. Eight feet before that white car? Yeah. Wow. Sure doesn't feel like it. Where am I lined yeah. up with the um where am I lined up with the dumping? You're kind of thing? far away from the dump. Okay, but well, let me focus on the car here. Ready? Yeah, go. Send her out. Send her. Woo! Downhill. Okay, so this is costing us $10. We're a bit in the way. It smells really bad. And I'm not a big fan of this. But it had to be done. And I didn't want to go to an RV park because that could be hit or miss. So here we are. Yeah, I, I can't say I'm going to be doing this very often, but, but it's good to know that it exists if you need it. Oh, Dad, look at that Peterbilt. Look at that Peterbilt. Oh, man, that's a good you. Okay, sick. Say, will they? That right there, that is what a 389 is supposed to look like. You ready? I'm so. We're empty. I, I, I think the question is, are you ready? Are you okay? After oh yeah, that? I'm good. I'm good. I, I had no no issues. How much did it cost? Ten dollars. So if people wanted to boondock. Yeah. And you, ten bucks every. I don't know. Depends on how good you are with your four tanks, days for every us. four days. That's could, not bad. That's you could not push bad. Five. We could ink out. A, we could ink out five. Do you think that there's going to be a whoa, hello? <laughs> hey, on on in more importantly, mm. did you see that beautiful Peterbilt that passed us? I did, and I thought to myself, Come on, we're going to have a conversation about that when he gets back. You really? Yeah. I did, because I saw the creamy white stripe oh, in the yeah. middle. Cream and ruby. Yeah. Where's our direction? Cream and ruby. Honey for sale, 16 ounces, $18, 8 ounces, 10, and grape jelly for five. Wow. Except cash, Venmo. 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 Also, check out our farm. Okay, so that's all really good, but where do I park? Just talk to you. Let me share one tip about backing up. Most people simply do not go enough far enough forward 
to make it easy for them backing up. I think the thinking is that the more they go forward, the more they have to, to back that distance, and so they're reluctant to do it. And the truth is, the further you go forward, the easier it is to get the trajectory you need multitasking here so that you so you don't have to turn your steering wheel as much and you get caught up in a in a bind so that's one thing and then other than that i just put my my hand down at six o'clock and initiate the direction i want and um it's all pretty easy and then the other thing i would say about it is i usually get lined up like this and then i'll go forward and i'll straighten out and it's kind of like resetting yourself. So I'll go in like this and then I'll go forward and then I can back in nice and straight, if it was a sight. You want to go over by the, the, ta the tables and chairs? Um, no, I think it's on that side. So our thing, what's our, our, oh, our door. door. Okay, you want to stop there and see if we're level? Sure. Right here, I'm Trish. Hi Trish, I'm Jim. That's good Jim, to nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. Yeah. Charlie, this is so I've got uh, some jelly. That's muscadine grape jelly. Hold on, Charlie. Um, what is it? Muscadine grapes. So muscadine grapes are one of the only uh, native grapes to North America. Uh, oh, wow. Most of them have been imported. They grow wild everywhere around here, especially North Carolina. Uh, they've got a little different flavor to them. We've got some huge vines up there that we pull off and make oh, jelly. Oh, neat. Uh, so yeah. not grape as we expect. It'd be different than a like your Concord grape jelly, yeah. Quite a bit different. Quite a bit different. People <laughs> like it though. Uh, and then we got honey, we got some... Uh, oh, got that's the, so cute. We got the dark honey here, which is okay. wildflower honey. And then I've got some, uh, some light honey for you. Oh, neat. Um, I think we'll go dark. All right. And then we definitely have to try your Good. jelly. Ooh. Jelly, right? Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> How fun. Yeah. Hey, being so level that we are, Caleb, let's get yeah. level front to back. And then yeah. let's get the Level Mate Pro out and let's get it installed. I mean, now is the perfect time. Is it, are we level left to right? We are so level left to right. Every time that we've been level with this, I have felt like we weren't level. And what I'm doing is I'm putting it down right here like this. And right here, it looks like I need to come up. So I've been lifting the trailer up. But yet when I put it right here, it's act we actually need to come down and when I put it right here it looks like we need to come down and when I put it right here it looks like we need to come down so it seems as though where I've been putting the level directly in front of the door isn't a level spot in the RV this is the box this right here is the device and this particular device is the Level Mate Pro Plus. And my understanding of how this works is that the Level Mate Pro Plus connects to an Apple Watch. I don't wear an Apple Watch, but Caleb does, so that's a perk. The other advantage to the Level Mate Pro Plus is that you can actually charge it with a USB. And so, therefore, if I were to mount it to where I have the USB outlets, then I don't have to worry about changing the battery if it's plugged in it's going. So I might consider putting it right up here where we have like the DVD player and I have a couple USB outlets. Of course, I also have USB outlets now that I think about it in the front of the, in our bedroom, which is as close to the cab as possible. Generally speaking, I think if you can mount this somewhere where you can reach it from the cab of your truck, you're going to have a lot more fun with the device because that's the one of the, the whole advantages is that you're able, when you're driving along and you're in a dry camp somewhere and you're not gonna disconnect, you can you can bring your phone out and get into the app and then you can just stop where it's level. Uh, of course, the other advantage to this is that if it's paired with the Anderson blocks, you can walk outside, put the Anderson blocks down, look on your phone, back up until you're level, stop, put the parking brake on, put the triangles in, and you're level. Okay, so I decided that I didn't want it in here like this because I usually keep books in here and I didn't want this being in the back of the, the book. So I put the three command strips like this and I decided to put it sideways right up here like that, right? Right at the top, like that. Stick that in nice and tight. Oh. 
this. Mark. Okay. What? Um, command strip rookie mistake. What? You didn't leave the little tabs out. You gotta leave the tabs out. How else do you rip the thing off? Listen, I'm new at this. <laughs> I'm new at this. <laughs> there we are. Hold on. So there we are. We're all level. Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, I smelled the sunk. He smelled it too and rolled. He smells like sunk. Awesome. He's sleeping with Caleb tonight. We're a big fan of bees. Love their work. And uh, if you have not seen our episode on the bees in Queenstown, New Zealand, we went to go visit a, um, what do you call them? It was like a honey, it was kind of similar to this. Yeah. And the gentleman there was just awesome. So I'm, I'm for my family, fifth generation. So we go back, my brother's a beekeeper, and he was a beekeeper, my granddad's father was a beekeeper, and my granddad used to buy his queen bees off um, Sir Edmund Hillary, the first man to climb Everest. Really? He's New Zealand's most famous beekeeper, and his dad was a beekeeper. Leave those front doors open like we talked about, and we'll just get you guys around the sides here. Okay. So if you look behind you, now got all these bees. Whoa! Everywhere, because yeah. they can't get in. So if you guys come around the sides. Come in the sides. And clear at that entrance. And, and now if you put a camera on the front door. Oh my gosh. Boom. Did you see them all come in? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So we were standing there and they just kind of blocked yeah, their entrance. Yeah, they just like, you guys are in the way. A wax covered suitcase yeah. of honey that, you know, could leave for a thousand years. It'll never go bad. Nothing can get in or out. Unbelievable. And come winter, take the wax lid off, eat the honey. Take the wax lid off, eat the honey. And so are you waiting for this all to be covered with the lids? Before? Well, it's a matter of not being a greedy bugger and uh, <laughs> ensuring that they need, each hive needs at least a box of honey to get through winter. So I want, wow. like for example, I want this hive to make two boxes. One for me, one for the bees. In there, that whole section, so that's, then. that's our, you know, if you take that lid off, it's sunny. Oh, Underneath yes. There. And this one? Another same drone? One, same one, yeah, yeah, just. Same. And then what else do we have here, Henry? You're picking out drones, but we also have, a lot, obviously, mostly females working. Uh, yeah, we've got, underneath those bees, I'm just going to blow a whole lot of little white larvae in there. So the queen's laying right out to these side frames, which, um, yeah, it means this, this, I mean, this box is chocker full of bees, isn't it? Look at yeah, it. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, uh, just have a wee scan for a queen. Look at that pollen in there. Ooh. So all that. Oh, yeah. You can tell if it's going to be a boy or a girl by the, the, the shape of the lid. So all these flat cap uh, into the cells here, we can tell that's all going to be worker brood. And then if we uh, poke around in here, See if you can see some of these ones. Here we go. Here, they stick out like a bit more like a 22 bullet mm -hmm. under here. Oh yeah, sure. So they're going to be they're going to be drones. They're going to be males. Okay. And they're really buzzing now. Sure. Are. You can hear the uh, tone. Yes. Has changed. And you don't have to be a beekeeper to, to know to that. Pick, to pick that up, that's the sound of getting pissed off. <laughs> getting a little pissed <laughs> off. You guys, but that's all good. But and you know, five minutes be completely settled and back to work. But what we'll do now is we've got ourselves a big, you know, about three kilo of capped honey. We'll go down to the shop and we'll take that capping off, spin that and put it into a jar for you to take away with you. So we'll go through the Amazing. part B. Part B. <laughs> part B. Well, I didn't mean, I didn't, actually, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Did, that was unintended. Completely unintended. Yeah. But I'll use it again. Yes. See that white wax is starting to reform again. So just really gently to drag that down. That's, a big, that's that pile of wax you can see down the bottom. So there's our fresh raw honey popper finger in there. Try that. That's so good. 
First of all, it's warm, <laughs> sure. which makes it so good. Because it's, it's fresh out of the hive, so it's, you know, the temperature inside the hive is warm. Yes, it's warm, mm. and it's amazing it tastes so fresh. The hive, 10 minutes ago. Yeah. It should be fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Day six, dry camping. We really kind of need to get to an RV park. We've got some needs. Having issues with the hot water, the hot water heater. What's happening is I text Woodlands and I said, hey, what do you think's going on here? The electric side's not working. The propane side is kicking on, but it's not staying on either long enough to heat the tank or it's not turning on frequently enough to heat it. So, you know, we're getting like, I don't know, 10 seconds of hot water and then it turns lukewarm and then it turns pretty dang cold. So, um, Eric said it could be more residual from the dewinterization. If you saw that video, when we dewinterized, uh, all that debris ended up going down the lines and it clogged the kitchen sink faucet. And it was a pretty simple solution and just take off the aerator and it was completely clogged and cleaned it out, problem solved. I think I might've mentioned in that video, I wonder where else that debris went. If it went to the mixing valve, then the mixing valve is clogged, which is potentially kicking off the hot water heater prematurely. Uh, or there's cobwebs in the tube that I need to go check. So I need to, we're gonna be at a KOA up at Kitty Hawk for about six, seven nights. That will give us an opportunity to kind of explore the area, which I think Kitty Hawk has tons of history, which is fun. Um, but it'll also give me the opportunity to have an address, to ship some parts if I need to, um, clean out the hot water heater, pull up the bed, get access to the mixing valve, and do some troubleshooting. So, not to mention we have trash, we've got to get organized, we've got laundry to do. This is all part of the, part of the process. Every once in a while we need to take a little time out, get organized. All right, I started the truck. I'm gonna get Charlie in here. We're gonna get on the road. You gonna get Charlie from under the... Yeah, I'll get him. Here's your coffee. Oh, thanks. You're Is welcome. it a regular? Charlie, come on. Oh. Come on, Charlie. Yay. Come on, Charlie boy. It's time to go. Yay. Wait, 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 wait. Don't hop up, because you'll get short change there. Sit. Okay, here. Good boy. Okay, go. Go. Get up, come on. Yay, Charlie. Oh, who's a wow. good boy? Man, you are too who's good. Who's a good boy? You're too good, Charlie. All right, there we go. Okay. We'll be there by 3 p.m. Do we need fuel? We need fuel. In 600 feet, turn right onto Laura Ray Road. See the KOA sign right now. <laughs> <laughs> what I miss about the Love Maker. <laughs> yeah. feel like you won a championship. I know. That's it, great. It does save time. You know, it's like a totally different rhythm. Can can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. If you can't see it, I'm going to overlay it right there. But anyhow. I know you're excited. I got pasta going. Make them pasta salad. Ooh, really? Yeah. Yeah? Hey, did you see the fire ring out there? I, I This whole scene is amazing. It's That's actually great. pretty good. The more I'm here, the more I like it. Yeah. We are far from town, but the atmosphere is great. Yeah. Hey, you know what we need to get? What's that? We need to get that three quarter inch bit on that end of our screw gun, so we don't have to keep using this. Oh yeah. Um, I would like my privacy one. 
<laughs> Here, you're at one privacy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Very nice. I'm not even done setting up. Thank you. What I'm trying to do is before I have to take the bed off and take the wood up and disassemble the mixing valve, take it all apart, get access to the little screen in there that probably has debris on it. I'm just going to try to tap the debris off the screen. Take a shower and see if that works. I'll probably need to do this anyway, but just see if this is a quick solution. Okay. Yo! I got, I got scalding, unlimited scalding hot water in here. Did the tapping work? Look at this. It's glorious. Just wait, Trish. Just wait. Things are looking up. Wright Brothers. It's a national park. That's the coolest thing. Yeah. Are you I, mean, I got my national park pass. <laughs> you have if a I seem, water. If I seem distracted, it's because there's a wasp. I will escort you to the truck. <laughs> yeah. Your very first stamp's going to be Wright Brothers. Take a nap. One of my favorite parts of RVing is having a front seat to America's victories. Places just like the Wright Brothers Memorial. Standing where someone changed what we all thought was possible and created a new reality in a brilliant way. This didn't happen overnight though. It was the Wright's lifetime of working with machines in their shop that they theorized, if we can stabilize and control a bicycle in suspended motion, what else is possible? Then on one very cold December day in 1903 on the sand dunes of North Carolina, the dream became a reality. What is possible? This was the question that ultimately led to a memorial with the words chiseled, conceived by genius, achieved by dauntless resolution, and unconquerable faith. It's just such an incredible view, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but all I'm thinking about is these guys, how brave they are. They're like, I got an idea. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> Couple things you should know. RV parking, how about that? And these spots are actually really long, so we always have trouble with our huge truck, or if you have like a camper van or things like that, boom. And I'm really disappointed we didn't bring Charlie. Because I know. He could have walked this whole thing. Um, the only thing is one person would have had to wait outside while we were in the museum. But yep. the museum is really outside. That's yes. what you came for. So yep. anyway, two little tidbits. Please. What are you doing? Please. No, I'm going to drive. Please, are you sure? Yeah. Please. <laughs> I mean, I've already got it done. Please. <laughs> All you allies done. Okay, so here's what I know. What do you know? From the plaque. What this is that? part of the Atlantic was called the Graveyard of the Atlantic. Oh. Hundreds of ships. Really? And so they built three lighthouses, this being the biggest, made out of brick, so that uh, spaced by 40 miles apart. And oh. this is guide everyone in. To guide everyone in. Now this was known for 2.5 or this would not this would be identified as 2.5 seconds on 2.5 uh -huh. seconds off and then like 22.5 seconds off. So like like a like I don't know. It's their own form of SOS. Yeah. Anyway, so it was pretty cool. Nice. Made a brick. I mean, it's pretty distinct, huh? Yeah. With the white and black Stunning. lines. Stunning. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And this property is amazing. But I mean, it's windy out here. If it's normally this windy out here, no wonder these ships would have a problem, right? No Shallow kidding. sandbars and this kind of wind. Well, and there's got to be something out there that eats it all up, right? Cause like a monster?
stunner of a hat you have on. Yeah. It's called the Derby. Really? Yeah, and Orville picked it because it was created for men who used to ride horses to keep up with their game. Yeah. Yes, and branches wouldn't knock it off. So we figured that would be the best accoutrement <laughs> to his outfit when he went to go fly. Well, I know I'm digging it. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the other advantage of the hat. In a windy environment like we're in right now, it's not blowing off my head. It's very, <laughs> see that hat is, that hat is, but not this hat, this hat. And plus people like it. Everyone's looking over, laughing at me. It's good. So cute. So <laughs> So if you come to the lighthouse, which we recommend, because I think this property is stunning and this lighthouse is massive brick and really cool. If you come here, take that little boardwalk out to that spot way out there, because when you look back and you see the lighthouse, it's even more spectacular, which is hard to believe because even right next to it with all the grass and everything, everyone's taking pictures and it's really cool. And I'll tell you what, Kitty Hawk, the, the Wright Brother uh, Memorial, that was, that was worthwhile. That was a great visit. So much history and reading all the plaques and um, a lot going on. We really enjoyed our time.